and Nancy Spider and Monkey were friends. In fact, they called each other Compe and Nancy and Compe and Monkey. They would spend many hours a day in a long mango tree, one hanging from his web and the other hanging from a vine. After Compe Monkey had been repeatedly missing for a considerable amount of time each day, and Nancy became suspicious. What he does be doing, boy? Where he does go? I go find out today, today. And so, and Nancy began his investigation. Compe Monkey, oi! You're getting fat, fat, fat. Like you have a secret recipe or what? Feeling quite flattered, Monkey leaned over to Anansi, whispering, Anansi, can you keep a secret? Anansi was offended. So long we rolling together and I never set you up. How you mean if I could keep a secret? Compe Monkey invited Compe and Nancy to meet him at sunset right by the Pui and Mora trees. Soon it was sunset. Both friends showed up with large crocus bags and hunting tools. Wait now! That is not Farmer Olabu house right there, right there! shouted the Nancy. Compe Monkey silenced him. The last thing we want to wake is to wake up anybody now. In the distance, a figure could be seen, shimmering in green and gold. It was Zwill the Quillaby. That guy was thin. And when I say thin, I mean thin, thin, thin. He had a darting gait, and his beak was as sharp as a needle. But you see that Magas? He was the best young fan finder in town. When Zwill saw a Nancy, he was a bit skeptical. Who is you? He asked. Compe Monkey reassured him that everything was okay. He then warned Compe and Nancy, Don't do anything I don't do, and don't say anything I don't say. Swill so led the way, and in minutes they were standing in front of a tall mound. He carved a dome with his beak, then began to whisper a song. And then... It happened. In the gleaming, in the shining, let the moonlight prance in. Send us in, let us in, till my song is heard again. It was like magic. The dome opened up, revealing a tunnel. All three jumped in and rolled, then bam! The entrance closed up behind them in seconds. Wee foot! Look at yam! Bawled out on Nancy. If Farmer or Tabu caught them, it was going to be licks like fire. Zwill made something clear. And it's not just any yam. This yam is pre-cooked, special enchanted yam. Monkey man, make sure you tell this fella about my payment, you know. After every five yams, the sixth belonged to Dwill, Zwill. And Nancy picked up the fattest yam and began to devour it. Zwill angrily pulled it away and demanded his payment. Compe Monkey intervened and paid for Compe and Nancy. So why you got the on yam? I didn't come here to work for nobody. Monkey tried to explain that they didn't want to annoy Zwill. Because he was the one who could open the doorway. So they dug, dug, dug. 
and filled their bags. Every sixth young went to the Quillaby. Each time he ate, he sang the annoying jingle. Nyam, I am, I am, you yam, we yam, and yam in. They ate their bellies full and packed away the rest. It was time to leave. So Zwill sang his do song once again, just changing the words from let us in to send us out. And the same thing happened. It opened, then closed in seconds. For about three months, the trial did the same thing, night after night, song after song, yam after yam, until one night Anansi could take it no longer. Zwill, the Quillaby, was at it again with his irritating song. Yam, I am, I am, you yam, we yam, I am. Anansi began to quarrel. Lord have mercy! So you can't just eat without singing that foolish song? I can't take it any longer. The Quillaby rebutted that he should shut up and like it because there was no yam without him. This made Anansi even angrier. No yam without you? He responded. Then in a rage, and Nancy began to pick up yams and fire them at Zwill. Plateau! Plow! Plateau! Well, Zwill was excellent at ducking. He escaped every single blow. Soon, he was at the doorway, and it was the fastest he had ever sung his song. In no time, he was outside, and before Monkey could escape, the doorway was sealed. The monkey was furious. You know, my mother always told me not to line with stupid spiders. How are we getting out? Eh, eh? Anansi, very confident in his ability, said, So many times I heard that petty little song. I know I could sing it. They grabbed their heaping crocus bags and their tools and to the doorway they went. In the evening, in the smiling, let the moonlight dance in. Open the door, let us out, till my tune is heard again. Nothing happened. You see, you can't sing the song, you can't open the door. Have mercy if I'm not going to catch us. He tried again, changing evening to nyaming. Door to flow, tune to moon, out to scout, but nothing happened. Nothing except for the footsteps they heard from above. The footsteps and a song that made them do what taught me the man do in his pants. The voice was that of Farmer Olabu. His song was in the morning, in the evening, I am cleaning up my patch. Sunlight and daylight, I hope no one I catch. For who could be so bold as to steal away my stack? Will have to pay in whole card and cash, or bound to feel my lash. He began to dig. After every job of the shovel, the spider and the monkey went to the toilet on themselves. Three days later, they were revealed, together with the evidence of what they had been doing. Well, I catch all your wretches today! And with that, and with the shovel, there was blow after blow at Anansi. Fortunately, Compe Monkey was able to sap at his way out of the hole before Farmer Olabu's shovel could touch him. Wait a minute, he bawled, and Nancy got it good. He ached for weeks. Well, at least both Compe and Nancy, and well, at least both Compe and Nancy and Compe Spider 
learned their lesson and never stole again. Or did they? <laughs>